Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and another Stamp Timber video. I could not resist <laughs> making a card with the Memory Box collab, which came out a day or two before this. Not even sure. It's still available. And that was the day that two collab sets came out. You know, I couldn't keep up. However, it was perfect to use with this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. For those not aware, the Color Throwdown Challenge, there's a new one every single week. We do it just for fun. I will have a link to it in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video in the description box. And then with this collab set, all of the Stamp Timber limited edition exclusives are collaborations with so many different brands and Simon Says Stamp. And these limited edition ones are limited. When they are sold out, they are not restocked. However, the brands themselves have tons, tons of amazing stamps and dyes and products and all the good things. So I will have a link to the Memory Box brand as well. They make some of them like just, oh, they have so many good products, so many good products. So I'll have a link to them as well. And yeah, that's it for the intro. Want to get this up, you know, up and posted for you guys before I get working on the next one. So just keep watching and I will show you guys how I made this card. So this collaboration set is the Memory Box So Kind set. And I recently got my order of the newest Distress Holiday mica stains. And there's a couple shades of blue in those um, colors. And color throwdown challenge was two different shades of blue and then a yellow it says yellow but on my screen it was kind of green looking so I took a little creative license and I was like perfect perfect for the greenery <laughs> but I'm actually going to use a yellow but I'll get to that in a second what I did was I put um, a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper into my misty and I lined up these floral images they're technically magnolias but florals and art and card making. You can do whatever you want, use whatever colors you want, make it look however you want. It's all fun, you know? Um, I will say though, I like I mentioned in the intro, I linked to the memory box line and their last, either their last release or the one before you just like scroll down, they have a whole bunch of wafer dyes that like kind of match these like actual wafer dyes, you know, to build the florals with cardstock really pretty and I was like oh <laughs> I want to I want to order everything <laughs> super gorgeous anyway anyway I stamped the images with a first fine clear nocturne ink and heat embossed them and discovered as you saw on camera there that I couldn't just flip the the panel around I you know tried to see and it didn't line up so what I used instead was one of these large transparencies from Simon they these came out can't remember a couple of releases ago something I wasn't sent them I ordered them because I was curious and I ha and they've been sitting here for the longest time and I was pleasantly surprised I just kind of expected the transparency to be like just a piece of acetate you know and I always like those with the grid lines because I can move things around I've used them in many videos in the past these are actually quite hefty like they're not just thin acetate like it it, it, it was sturdy and I was like oh I like that even more because it just means I'm not going to wreck it because I've wrecked a lot of my transparencies. Anyway, I use that to just protect the cardstock to move the stamps around because then that way I don't have to clean my stamps. And I've shown in other videos, a lot of times I'll just use like the stamp packaging, different things to just protect my cardstock so I can move stamps around and I don't have to clean them because I just don't want to do that. That's That annoys me because if I'm just going to re-ink re and stamp them another time. So... I did all of that and then I um, reheat embossed the images, you know, so I created my background and then I'm using, I'm going to use my mica stains to paint with. And I started with Holly Branch and Harvest Moon. Those are the two I'm going to mix together. And then the blues are the Wonderland and Juniper Berry. And with the mica stains, you need to shake them up really well. And especially these, my phone is going off, sorry. Anyway, especially the blue ones because I've had, they've been sitting since I ordered them. Like they've just been sitting on my desk, just staring at me. So anyway, 
You shake them up really, really, really well. You want to make sure all that mica is dispersed throughout, especially if you're planning on spraying with them because you don't want to clog the nozzles. But you shake them up. And then I put mine on my little palette. And they look kind of like nothing, you know? Because even on the palette, the mica settles to the bottom. And the liquid is sitting on top. So it will it looks really dark like that. You know, the, the green almost looks black on the camera on the palette. Because all the pretty mica, you know, fabulousness settles on the bottom. So if you're painting with them, you need to swirl your brush. Like make sure you're actually picking up the shimmer. Because otherwise you're just painting with the liquid. Which is also pretty. It's just the whole point is the shimmer. And this applies too to when I'm using like... I'll, I've done many videos using like my Distress Oxide sprays to paint with and Oxide inks even when I smush them onto a palette and add a bit of water. Same thing, the pigments settle to the bottom. So you just want to swirl that up to get like the intended, you know, the intended color, the intended use, all, all the good bits. Yeah. So, and I've done videos in the past painting with the mica stains because they're just, it's just fun. <laughs> it's just fun. And it adds shimmer and I, I will show at the end with my flashlight because on camera right now, like this just looks like whatever, you know, but the beauty is of course the shimmer and yeah, I love all these mica stains. You just, they get me, they get me with my magpie tendencies and you know, just add a little shimmer sparkle to something and I'm, I'm going to want it. I'm going to want multiples of it. I will use it, but I just, I just want it. I want the shimmers. <laughs> Uh, so anywho, after, um, applying everything to the palette, I just painted, just use a little paintbrush and that's it. Like nothing fancy. I'm not doing really any, you know, shading anything. The only thing I did is I mixed the, the Wonderland, which is the lighter blue with that juniper berry. Um, I just laid out the, the lighter blue, the Wonderland. And then while it's still wet, I went in with a little bit of the juniper berry, just, just to darken it up a bit. But that was the only thing and then the mixing of the harvest moon and the um, holly branch colors so after I painted them and they were dry I normally I would just wipe this palette off that it doesn't phase me it looks like you know there's so much there that's being wasted it's not it's hardly anything considering how much I use my mega stains I have yet to use up a even half a bottle and I use some of these a lot anyway I decided to splatter with them because I was going to splatter anyway um, with other things. And then I was like, why not just use what's sitting on my palette? And so I went just bonkers and heavily splattered this entire background with all of these. Cause why not? It just, it added texture, it adds extra shimmer. And when it catches the light, it's so much fun. So I used my little fan brush and just swirled it in each of these mica stains, splattered everything again, let it dry, which didn't take very long. And then I used, um, some white gouache to do some splatter. This is going to be much more subtle <laughs> than everything else, but it just adds a little extra texture. And the white gouache, it dries back a bit. It kind of absorbs the color that, you know, it touches underneath it. So it's, it's not going to be like harsh white, you know, splatter, but again, it just adds that little extra something. And here's proof that, you know, you can technically never add too much because, you know, it just, it just worked. So for my main sentiment, I am using Simon's uh, Fancy Giving Thanks die set, one of my favorites. This came out at the beginning of the month. And I went through my cardstock stash and I could not find the right shade of cardstock that I wanted in my head. I just, that dark blue like that juniper berry mica stain is a pretty unique color. And yeah, with all the cards I had, I couldn't find anything that just worked. So I made my own. I took a piece of Simon's Island Blue cardstock, which, and I'll compare when I'm done this, you can see like huge difference. And over it, I blended um, Tropic Simon Positively Saturated Ink, and that gave it a little bit of a green, and it wasn't quite right yet. So then I pulled out Cadet, a blue ink, and blended that as well. I used my heat tool just to speed up the drying process, and I got the shade of blue I wanted. So you can see how it was originally there on the right. And then what I created by just blending a couple colors on top of it. The blend doesn't need to be perfect. Simon's positively saturated inks smooth out as they dry. And 
yeah, you can do this on white cardstock. You can do this on color cardstock. Obviously, on color cardstock, it's worth like testing, and that's what I was doing. I was just testing to see if I could, you know, get the color I wanted, and I managed to do that. So I was quite proud of myself. And it's a really pretty color. And I'm like, hmm, I need this. I have other ones similar. You know, there's some beautiful colors of cardstock out there, but this specific one was being elusive. So created it myself. We're good to go. So I used that to die cut the outline for this grateful sentiment. And then the sentiment itself, I die cut from scraps of white cardstock, stacked them together as is tradition to give them the dimension I wanted, just using some craft tacky glue. And mine is, I have a little Gina K precision bottle that I filled with Simon's craft tacky glue and stacked all those together. And then for the rest of the sentiment, I'm using one of the ones from this memory box. So kind stamp set. I love the sentiments and I love the font. It's also why I just, I had to use this set. It was, it's just, it was bugging me. <laughs> My OCD was starting to really come out. So anyway, I took the for you sentiment and a scrap of sea glass cardstock and I stamped it with that same Versafine Claire Nocturne ink and clear heat embossed it. And then for my background, I am trimming this down to be smaller than my A2 card base. So I used one of my waffle flower uh, rectangle wafer dies. And then I decided to make my card base out of the sea glass cardstock as well, just because it was sitting there and it's another one of my just favorites I love. So I cut a sheet in half and then scored it at five and a half inches. So this will be an A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half and put the card base into my Misty again with one of the florals from the So Kind set. And I inked that up first with the blue inks, so that Cadet ink, and then wipe off the stamp and I'm gonna ink it up with a tropi Tropic ink and stamp it right on top. So it's just, again, tones it down a little bit from the blue and gives it more of that kind of aqua blue color I was going for. Again, it's subtle. But I noticed a difference and it just made me happy. So after I stamped that, I lined up another sentiment from the set. And that I'm going to stamp with that Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. So once I get that stamped into place, then I'm going to put um, Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of my watercolored panel so that it can bump it up a little bit with dimension, but not create a whole ton of bulk. So line the back of this with that foam tape using my uh, Positively Everyday scissors. I always forget the name of these, but I was just linking to things before I started the voiceover, of course. And yeah, I think they're called the Positively Everyday. I'll have a link to them like everything else. So got the foam tape on the back of here, peeled off the backing, popped this onto the card front and then adhered the die cut sentiment with um, craft tacky glue. And then the little for you sentiment, I just trimmed down a little piece of that um, Big Mama foam tape to pop that up with just a tiny bit of dimension. Cause I was like, mm, don't want to adhere it like right to the card base. And I was like, no, it needs, it needs to be popped up too. You know, again, like Laura Basson says, dimension is life. <laughs> so, Got that on there, popped that into place, and then went through my stash and found bling that matched and that I didn't have to do anything crazy with, unlike the cardstock that I had to do blending. Um, these are some Trinity Stamps Vast Ocean Confetti. And just put a few of those, just a few, onto the card and adhered those into place with little dabs of glue. Once those are adhered, this card is complete and I'll turn on the flashlight so you guys can kind of get an idea of like the shimmer and the glitter and oh, I love the mica stains. They are so much fun. So much fun. So got all that complete. Like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link to my blog post. That'll be linked directly below the video. That'll have the link to the color challenge. I'll have links to all the supplies I use, these limited edition sets while while they're in stock, which won't be for long, and then the memory box line, all the, everything else I use. That will all be in the description box below the video for anyone who is interested. As always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.